Returning from the fly-in, we stopped to charge in Wyoming. There was another vehicle sitting there with a guy in it. He got out and put some cones in front of the other charging stations, blocking them off. I thought this was a little strange, so I got out and talked to him. Turns out he was a tech for Tesla, and he ended up giving me my Cybertruck sooner than expected. Cybertruck has arrived. Hello everybody, and welcome back to the King Fox channel. My name is Matt Conniger, and I'm building a Kit Fox Model 7 STI. In this video, we're going to get into the rudder pedals. I'm going to start pulling everything that I need. So sit back, relax, and let's jump into the video. The book right now is telling me that I need to shorten up the, this piece here, the rudder horn modification, but as you can see on mine, I, I don't know if it's because I ordered the prefab kit, but they're already shortened, so I'm going to be able to skip that step there. Side note, um, I don't know if I, I showed you guys earlier those uh, nut and bolt containers that I got, which are very helpful for storing all the nuts and bolts. But in the kit itself, there's duplicate parts, especially if you got any of the prefab stuff. So what I was looking for in this case was some of these uh, these lock washers. They're uh, AN936 Alpha 416. I got, I got four of them here, and it says right on here, rudder pedal prefab kit. So. I was pulling them from another package that I have, which is just a hardware kit for the fuselage. Same part number, same washer. So instead of pulling them out of here, and then later on, there was there's five in here, but there's only four in here, and this is specific to the to the rudder pedal kit. So if I pull four out of here and leave one, later on I'm going to go, oh, I'm supposed to have five of these, and probably not remember that there's four in the rudder, rudder pedal kit itself. So I'm going to put these back and uh, put them back in my little inventory box and use those that are appropriate for the adjustable rudder pedal, ru adjustable rudder pedal kit. It's a little tongue twister there. So this little box right, right here just says it right on there. So adjustable rudder pedal kit and it's box six. I used, probably saw the screen recording there where I did the, showed you the inventory list. It's kind of a pain in my butt to do that, but uh, instead of thumbing through, instead of thumbing through this thing, and there's like 26 pages in there. I find it's a lot easier just to open up that uh, that Excel spreadsheet or pages in this case and type in the number, it takes me right to it. I got the box number, the part number, how many there are, and then I go get it. So that's something that you can do if you get uh, inventory list or if you can ask Pitfox to just send you the XLS file, then you won't have to take two days typing it up and reading all those numbers. So back to the video. All right, I got everything pulled. I need to start working on these, the rudder pedal kits. So I've got the the four um, pulleys that are going to get mounted. Then I got the bolts, the lock washers, the nuts, and then this strapping material over here, which is going to be it's going to become the little brackets that go up, over, and around the pulley, so that the rudder cable doesn't come off. So I got to fabricate those, and then get those bolted on to to these horns here. So I still got to ream these out, which I'm getting ready to do. So we'll move on to that. And we're gonna get these tabs reamed up. I got the .25 reamer here. I annotated the .25 on there, so it's easier to pull out of the drawer quickly. And if I can get it in through here, I won't have to push, but since it hits over here, I can't pull it through, so. And it does hit, so. That one and this one I'll have to I'll have to push it through and keep as straight as I possibly can. So put a little cut and oil on the reamer and then pull it through on these on these other two. And as you can see I I can't even get it through the hole there either, so oh. Maybe that way will work. 
that. There's too much powder coating on there, so probably just going to have to push it through on all of them and do my best to keep it as straight as possible. Same here. Get it through one. Oh, there we go. I can, I can actually pull this one through. You're going clockwise. Not much on there. So, nice and clean. bound there a little bit because I probably wasn't holding it perpendicular to the material so all right and we'll see if the bolts get in there clevis bolt uh, 9019 are the only bolts I have on the table so why am I looking probably just to double check and make sure I have the right nut bolt all right they fit through there nice good fit I'll test all of them just to make sure I don't have any hang-ups. As you can see the tabs on here are a little they they move a little bit so if the hole if it hits a little bit you're probably just gonna have to there well it doesn't so if it did just give a little squeeze to make sure everything's parallel and then it should go right through. All right bolt goes through all the holes, so I'm done with the reaming on the 0.25. Should have a little cloth to wipe that off with. Alexa, turn on the garage. Just about forgot what do we do after we ream? Well, we deburr. So get the old trusty deburring tool out and give that a little turn in there. Hard to do on this side. And it's gonna be hard to get into that side of that hole. But I don't feel any burrs there, so I'm gonna call that good. nice and smooth. So I got my pulley and I got to take this strap and I think it has to go like half the diameter of the hole past if I read that right. The hole is going to be a three eighths, three eighths of an inch, so ten millimeters. So if I go five millimeters past where I'm going to drill the hole, but I basically need to add ten millimeters to, to twenty millimeters, ten, ten for each side, to uh, to my measurement. So I'm just going to pull my tape along here, and this would probably be easier if you had a paper tape, so you could bend it easier. I'm just going to push it past, and then I'll bend it over the top and come down the other side. And I'm going to I'm just going to start on the two inch mark so I've got a straight line across there and hopefully don't damage my tape. This would be a good time to have three hands. Well, I might try a different method. I'm gonna go past an eighth of an inch and that gets me at two and a sixteenth times two 
and I'm looking at I think a half inch is a safe bet. It's pretty much right on the mark at just a smidge under 7 16 In fact, I can get my new little caliper out and test that because it's in the description below, but I have yet to use it, so that's why I got it. It'll be in the last drawer I look in. And I'm in the last drawer, and there it is. Okay, this is an Amazon purchase, so I did some reading about them and thought this one was sufficient for what I'm doing. I have measured a few little bolts offline and it seems to, if they're quarter inch bolts, it seems to say they're quarter inch bolts. So it just turns on all by itself. Come in here and run it up against the edge. It says 10.94 millimeters and if I go to inches it's 0.43 inches. So I think I can probably go with a 0.46, whatever that is in inches, I should maybe get a millimeter measuring tool, although it looks like I have millimeters on here. So 0.46 inches is about 11 and a half millimeters. We could say 12 millimeters, right on the money. I think that's a pretty tight tolerance to keep the cable from slipping off. So I'm gonna go with 12 millimeters, or pretty close to half an inch though. So maybe I'll stick with half an inch since everything else is gonna be in inches. No. Maybe what I can do is, I guess it'll open up this way too. So I can come down past the end, to the end of my pulley, and I'm at 1.957. Well, let me just go to two inches. So I can say two inches, two inches, four inches, plus a half, four and a half inches. Let's do that. So I just marked four and a half inches in from each end, and I'm gonna give it a A little faster. Back in the vise, took that little bend out of it that was on the end. Same with this one. Got that little bend there, so let's take it back in the vise, crimp it a little. Seemed to do it. Then I'm just gonna run a little sandpaper to take the Burr off the end of that. Got a little jagged piece there. Much better. Couldn't find my file. I'm going to clamp it and bend it, and hopefully, my radius because every time you bend it, you're gonna add some more length to it because the curve is longer than a straight line. And hopefully that won't screw me up here. So I'm gonna give it a try on this first one. Watch my ears. It's not going to work for this one, obviously, because I'm going to hit on this side or this side, so I'm going to come up with something else. Yes! 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 
course that's hot. Maybe that bit is not sharp. Good thing I stopped holding it with my fingers. Little change bits. bit. I would say these need to be about five five inches long total. For one, it's three-eighths from the end of here to the center of the bit, which I'm not, and I'm also not centered. I was having a fit with my three-eighths is just about at the, it's at the top there, so even if I come down, yeah, so I'm off. And it looks terrible. It's bend, bends are terrible. Uh, I've got to get a jig or make something to, to bend these on. And I'm obviously not centered. And that bit that burnt through there left a heck of a burr on the back of that. I think you can see it. Um, so I pretty much need to file that off. I'm going to call this one garbage. And since this one is about four and a half inches long also, four and, almost four and nine sixteenths, it's probably not going to be long enough. I will try to bend it. And I think I got my drill press figured out. That's why I was drilling that first one by hand, which even with that, I'm probably gonna have to toss that bit. Even with that center punch on there, this this bit wanted to, uh, to walk around on there, so I wasn't centered. So I'm gonna, I'll probably have to order some more of that or see if I have some more of that in another kit. And, which I think I do, because I got quite a few more uh, pulleys to put on so certainly should have some more of that so i should be able to order i'll find this part number in one of the other kits i'll dig it out steal from it and then i'll probably see if i can get some of that on order so i'm not so it's not holding me up you probably don't waste your time with a hacksaw i just used the old stanley metal cutters and uh cut through that baby like butter so nice edges nothing to sand not even sharp so that would be my recommendation for cutting those straps. And I cut them exactly in half, five inches, so no more meddling around with the too short. If they're too long, you can cut them off. So go for the length. On these, on these pieces, it'll keep the rudder cable from slipping off the pulley. And out of four, I managed to get one to work. This one here, I'm not too happy with. You can see the drill bit was, the drill bit was, uh, not sharp and it left a big old burr on the back side of that piece not to mention it bent it seven different ways from Sunday so after straightening it out too many times I've decided that it's probably compromised so I'm gonna try to get another piece of that steel tomorrow and in the meantime I just put the I put the pulleys in there put the bolt through the, the washer on and the nut on and I just hand tightened them so all that I need to do is make those I can make them if I have a sharp drill bit, which I did pick a new one up. did use the drill press for this one. I used the drill press for this other one also, but something caught down there and it spun it and bent it all out of shape. So so I'm going to keep on going. And this was, uh, I had to turn ahead to the um, page 84. It was Appendix A, optional adjustable rudder pedal installation. So basically it just said fabricate this bracket and uh, do that for all four of these and uh, torque them down to 30 to 40 inch pounds, which I, which I have not torqued this one yet, so I'm gonna come back, I'll torque them all at one time, and we'll get that on video, and then uh, go from there. So I'm gonna roll back to page 46, so I can continue to assemble this setup, and uh, hopefully get the whole piece ready to go, to go in the airplane, and then just come back, make these brackets, and, and wrap it up. So I'm gonna get into this. All right guys, just a minute ago I lied, so I made four. This is the one that I twisted all up and straightened out. And then I 
had this one sitting over on the bench. So these two turned out good. These are the cut out of the five inch. Basically I cut that piece in half instead of cutting four and a half inches out of each side. So, so I'm gonna stick this one on that other pulley right here and then just hand tighten it again until we are gonna to torque them all at once. I gotta ream these uh, four holes on each brake slash rudder pedal to uh, 0.1875. So, so I'm gonna lube up the old uh, reamer and do some reaming. And these are the Puka pedals, just like my center console. You can tell because they have a lot of holes in them. <laughs> 